third party review and today we're going to be taking a look at the iGear Coneheads PP03J Jet, otherwise known as Ramjet PP03A Attack, also known as Thrust and PP03E Elegy, otherwise known as Dirge now, just to drop a little bit of knowledge, I find it interesting that Ramjet and Thrust are just named Jet and Attack when they came up with such a good name for Dirge uh, with Elegy. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what a Dirge is, uh, the definition is a lament for the dead, especially one forming part of a funeral rite, or a mournful song or poem. An Elegy is a poem of serious reflection, typically of a lament for the dead, or a piece of music in a mournful style. So, Elegy, the name just nails it for Dirge without just flat out saying Dirge, and then they kind of phone it in for Jet and Attack. Now, just like the Sea Spray and Rager, uh, Sea Spray and Huffer, I should say, uh, mini bots they did, their boxes, as you can see, actually all form one picture if you wanted to display the box. Unfortunately, they're pretty big. And I am sitting roughly, I would say, three feet away from the box. So this is not only a full arm's length, but this is also me leaning forward and I still can't touch the box. Inside the box, on every one of them, you get, if I can grab it all, you get the little clip that pegs into the bottom of the jet mode to hold the uh, MP01 Megatron gun. You of course get a Dr. Archiville, but who needs him? And you get the typical three cluster, well two cluster I guess, I thought I remembered it being three, but the two cluster missiles. Um, you get two sets of those. You also have inside each of the boxes a card. Uh, there's attack, jet, and Elegy and they're just they're almost like a credit card in terms of thickness and they just tell the stats on the back they're pretty nice cards um, you also with the cards get comics featuring each one of the characters and the final thing you get inside each is some stickers now you get some just miscellaneous jet stickers but you also get ones that are kind of, I guess, character specific. You get for the jet some kind of uh, flaming horse head type logo. And I'm probably not going to put these on. The only ones I'm thinking of putting on are Decepticon symbols. And even at this point, I don't even know if I'm going to do that. Attack, you get some... Uh, I'm not sure what you would call those. And then finally, for Elegy, you get Black Roses because it's for a funeral. Now, on the back of all these boxes, you get another very nice piece of artwork of each one of them done in their alternate modes here. So I thought that was a pretty cool touch. Instead of getting the product shots or anything like that, you just get another picture of the three cone heads here. So that about does it for the box. Let's finish with the box and actually move on to the secret, the cone heads themselves. Okay, so here we have the three of them and unfortunately to be able to do anything with them, I'm not going to be able to keep them all on screen. So let's just move into uh closer proximity to these guys and we'll start with thrust here so we'll take them right off of the, uh, the little base they come with the same style base that Starscream and Skywarp and I suppose Thundercracker come with um, it doesn't say their names and it doesn't have the Decepticon logos on it just plain black now the jets themselves are just absolutely fantastic my only complaint is that the nose cone is the same color as the body and I'm kind of tempted to carefully take them off and paint them black but I feel like that's a lot of work and it might uh, 
end up breaking the toy. Um, of course the cockpit opens because you do have your Dr. Archiville and he will fit right inside and close on in if you so choose. The All the gimmicks from the old masterpiece are here. Uh, for instance, the air brake. You can still put that up. The engine compartments, uh, the maintenance areas, they are still there. The thrusters are still variable. And you still have the nose cone that opens up. The landing gear, of course, also the same way. Where you just kind of flip it on out on each leg. And then the front one that you open this and then pull it down. I don't think I need to show you guys that though. So yeah, it's a really nice representation of thrust. I like how they did his his wings. Um, unfortunately, these don't the vents don't actually turn or anything like that. Uh, one nice touch is on every single one of these, you have the space for their two weapons. And they actually have two more holes, so they can actually accommodate the uh, cluster missiles. So if you want, you can put them all on. Just like this. And you can basically give more heavy armament to any one of the jets. And I really like that extra feature here. Um, it's pretty nice to have, be able to do something with those. Notably, I do not have the Megatron gun handy, but if you wanted to do it, you can plug that right into here and he'll hold the uh, little uh, MP01 Megatron gun in, in his nose. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that, so I don't really bother with it. So let's put thrust aside for now. And actually, before we do that, let's bring out a masterpiece Starscream just so you guys can really see just how radically different the uh, alt modes are for the two of them and I just like you know there's just a huge contrast between their looks there all right Let's take these guys aside and we'll go to Ramjet. Now, notably, you actually need to get, if you want to get them both and get them accurate, you kind of need to get both Ramjet and Dirge. Because if you notice, I have the big missiles on Ramjet and the little missiles on Dirge. That's the correct way, but Ramjet comes with the little missiles and Dirge comes with the big ones. Um, if you look back to G1, it's the other way around where Ramjet has the big fat ones and Dirge has the little skinny ones. So let's look at Ramjet. Ramjet is a brilliant white. In fact, most of the time he really doesn't like showing up on camera because of his whiteness. Uh, you can see he's got the, you know, the Ramjet wings. He's got more variable positioned uh, thrusters on the wings too to give them a total of four and that's just really really cool again you have the two spots for the missiles so let's arm him up and let's see what he's gonna look like with his extra armament and all these guys just they just all really look nice together they did a really good job on them, and I know that the core of the uh, toy came from Hasbro, but hey, whatever. I'm a third party guy, so it's okay with me. So that's pretty nice. These are like a painted uh, metallic-y color. It's really, really pretty actually in person, and the striping job is just perfect. So. Let's go to our final one, which is, of course, 
dirge. And dirge, unfortunately, I guess is a little more lackluster. He has no rear stabilizers or anything. Um, I still like him. Dirge has always been one of my favorites when I was little. But uh, he's probably one of the more boring ones, comparatively. Um, interestingly enough, though, you can see that his wings aren't perfectly leveled. So it does give him a very interesting like front uh, perspective. So I do like that. Again, you can position the, no the missiles where you want. Um, in this case, I put his long ones in here because are on the outside because I feel they are hidden a little more when they're on the inside. But we'll move them to the inside because we're going to put the uh, cluster ones on the front. And they also have these little, I don't know why, they have, if you look real carefully, there's little notches hanging down. That does tend to get it in the way a little bit. Dirge, I think, benefits the least from all the uh, extra missile attachments. I really like attack having them because if you're intending him to be some kind of like super fighter jet, I really like the extra missiles. Dirge, on the other hand, I don't know. The missile's all kind of angled downwardly and they're really mostly hidden by the wings. So he really benefits the least. Now I did do a picture. Uh, I have taken some pictures already of these guys in their alternate modes and I did it next to Starscream and Skywarp. Unfortunately I don't have, uh, what's his name, Thundercracker yet, but I'm hoping I'll eventually get one sometime so uh, you'll see pictures of that at the end if you want to see them all next to each other uh, the only real complaints I have about these guys in their alternate mode is it, it's especially present in my thrust that the piece here that lifts up sometimes likes to just pop apart uh, thrust does it a lot dirge kind of does it but I'll push it back in oh, there it goes it came out again but usually dirge I push it back in and it stays but the rest that centerpiece really likes to pop out so since all these guys transform the same way I'm really not going to show you every single transformation I'm just going to show you one and then we'll jump cut so be prepared you know what's coming so the first thing you're going to do is just take it and extend out his legs here and I always find this to be the hardest part it always requires me to grip it a strange way and just kind of get your nail in and flip it out like that. I hate these little feet things. They're the worst part. Now this is one of the improvements that's been done to the mold. You can take the tail section and you can actually push it on up so you can see there's a much different height there and that gets these out of the way and removes them from being hip kibble. Uh, my Starscream uh, was modified by the person who I bought it from previously um, to not have the hip kibble so you're going to see that he's going to be pretty he's going to be pretty similar in that regard um, but it's not that that's not the official transformation once we get sky warp in you'll see the difference uh, from here what I like to do is push down on these because that really by pushing down on them and moving them forward it gives me the room that I can usually get these out without them popping off if they do pop off on you I mean don't be worried if they pop off because they're just a little peg in a hole so it's not going to hurt anything if they pop off, but, you know, who likes to have pieces just fall off when they're transforming things? So, let me move that forward, and then once you have these forward, you can actually fold these little pieces on in. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to come to the sides and kind of unpeg the tops and pull them out like that. So you see that little peg? Again, you pull it up a little and then pull it out. 
like that. And that's going to give us a little bit of extra room that we need to work with some things. And from there, you can take his arms and kind of fold them on out. And I bring them all the way up just to get them out of the way temporarily. So, fold them out. And again, as I'm doing this, another problem that these guys have with their change in articulation and stuff, I've had these little pieces actually pop off and so I've glued a couple of them back on in place. Uh, it just looks like they didn't really receive enough glue when they were held in place. Not a real big issue, but just something to be aware of. So once the arms are out of the way here, we can take this assembly and rotate it on down on each side here. There we go. You can see his little head sitting there. Now you'll push the back out like this. And then you can open this open the cockpit and you're gonna fold uh, I just realized you can't see this okay <laughs> let me do that again here so what you're gonna do is open your cockpit fold this section down fold your seat on inwards and I believe Dr. Arkerville can sit in there still when, when you put it away if you want to display him I never do so whatever once you have that you can fold everything down this nose cone is pretty flexible and you're just going to take it and push it through the back just like you would the old generation one seekers and cone heads and just keep flipping this around oh, and I lost his head his head got caught and this is a another small issue that is fixable but it's worth pointing out nonetheless is that his head is on a really loose ball joint there it, it holds good enough but it is a bit loose so once you get that nose cone in you're going to push it all the way into the back so it's as close to his back as possible fold down the uh, rear piece here with the air brake and plug it on in and when you do that it should all fit together pretty nice and then you see the little silver piece at the bottom there's a hole in the back and as you slide this whole assembly down if you have it transformed correctly um, that silver piece should go into the hole in the back I gotta spread his legs here a little so I can get a position that I can grab it actually what we'll do before we do that take this wing assembly and you're gonna have to mess with the air brake thing on the back and just fold it on up here just to get it out of the way now we have more room to mess with and you can make sure that that assembly locks in like that and then bring down these if they didn't come down on you in the uh, transformation process. And let me just check. Yeah, just making sure the silver piece is plugged in. From there, you can now rotate his arms. And again, I've popped this on up. I always find this sliding assembly to be hardest and it seems to be harder to get proper on these guys than it is on the official one. On the official seekers, I should say. Rotate his arm. Bring his hands down. Do that for the other side here. Rotate it. Bring it down. Open up his little fingers here. And then, if you did it right, everything should 
kind of fit like that. You can rotate these wings on in if you want. And you do have a couple little options here. You can hinge these. They're on a hinge, I should say. So you can rotate them on in if you want. That's how I prefer to have it. Um, I don't think that you can, you have to have it that way, I should say. So, there we go. We have the seeker mold. And he still has that problem with his feet that he doesn't really like to stand this mold. But fortunately, because of these leg pieces, once you've got him all transformed, you can actually push them down. And that's usually what I tend to do is push them down and then once these are when they're halfway between places they'll really be loose like that when they're all the way up they're solid when they're all the way down they're solid but when you're halfway down they're not quite so solid but given that you can use them to give and it's arguing with me here but given that you can actually push them down so he's not standing actually on the thruster he's actually standing on this little peg you can now give him a little bit more uh, ability to stand than the regular seeker could alright so we're just about done here and uh, I was struggling when I was getting this uh, chrome piece into the back here and I just kind of when I was messing with the rest I realized the better way to do it so the best way to do it is to keep one finger on the cockpit keep it open and then by doing that you can actually ensure that it slides in properly and uh, it's a very secure connection once you do that so yeah all my struggling there you know moving it forward and back and all that stuff you know, there was really just no need to do that when you, it's easier just to keep it open. So, anyway, here's Thrust, and Dirge, and Ramjet. Again, they are the cone heads, so they all share the basic overall designs. Um, they do have a couple of tweaks here over the Masterpiece Starscream mold. Here is the Starscream mold. One thing you'll notice, the Starscream mold has this little piece that the head has to fit through. On the cone head ones, that has been removed and is actually added to the back there. So you can see that the back of this is actually a little bit taller than the back of Starscream. But it really doesn't take away much from the uh, toys. I'm going to put Thrust back because I want to save him for a little bit. Uh, here is Ramjet looking pretty nice. Articulation, you get a good uh, shoulder. You get the 360, uh, a rotation at the upper arm, the elbow, um, the fingers, you got these three are linked, the pointer is by itself and the thumb is by itself. Um, it gives decent posability. It is on a swivel so you can turn it if you want. Uh, he does kind of suffer a little bit from Armada Unicron uh, design, which is that since this is all ratcheted, um, you may find yourself that he doesn't have quite enough ratchets and you know he's stuck in between a position that you want. He does have forward and back, but I don't really turn that very much, and you can hear it's a pretty loud click there, so I'm always hesitant to turn the forward and back, but that's okay, because I'm perfectly content with my cone heads just having that very brute stance with just the wide legs like that. Especially works good for, you know, Dirge and Ramjet who have their little bell-bottom pants there. Um, like the Masterpiece Seekers, you do have the rocket nipples on both sides or the whatever. I guess they're rocket missiles. The missile spam. Um, there is one more improvement here. 
and it requires taking off these missiles and they actually added on each of these guys little communicators kind of like uh, MPO1 had there. Now on Ramjet you see you have uh, it, it's a seeker of some form I think it's the Fallen to be honest um, looks like there's fire behind it could be Starscream I suppose you can see his head this is what I was talking about that it's it's really loose once it's in this position it holds really well but when you tilt it back it just wobbles all over so that's just a little nail polish uh, fixing and we'll open this one here to reveal Megatron and we'll put him back over to the side Oh, and notably, every one of them does have the flaps that move too. I forgot to mention that in their uh, alternate mode. Let's go to Dirge next. And we'll take his missiles off. And let's look at his communicators. He's got... sound wave and star screen now thrust is the interesting one in my opinion I find his communicators to be probably the most fun I guess because he's either really vain or really dumb so let's pull the missiles off here and we'll open this one to reveal himself. So I don't understand why he's talking to himself. So it's either a mirror or he's stupid. And then on this side, another interesting one is, uh, looks like Skyfire. But hey, whatever, Starscream was friends with Skyfire before. So these guys definitely do look really nice on a shelf together and even better if you actually have the official uh, Hasbro Seekers to go along with them. Um, as you can see my Starscream with his modified uh, hip kibble, he actually stands really nicely. Unfortunately Skywarp is in need of a stand which really places him as an oddball there. really got to find some way to get him to stand properly whether I modify him myself or I uh, come up with some kind of adapter but it's a really nice display and they fit really nice together and they all have a lot of personality I would love to get the new star scream but uh, he's a bit expensive uh, for what you get considering I already have this star scream so yep I am just missing thundercracker at this point and uh, yeah, the cost of an actual Hasbro one is astronomical, so I may end up just getting the iGear version, because the iGear Seekers are really well done. So this is T2RX6 guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I will see you next time.